but hope is the soil. So faith needs that soil in order to germinate and produce what it says it sees. Hope is that confidence, that steadfast confidence and belief that regardless of what's going on around me, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what I'm facing right now, I know that I know that I know that God is in control. Hope is the confident expectation of our desired future state. Hope is saying that while what I see in the natural does not line up with what is in the word, I choose to believe what the word says. And if the word says that I am healed, then I'm going to declare I am healed. If the word says that I am blessed, then I'm going to declare that I am blessed. I may be walking through sickness right now, but I know healing is mine. I may, live in, I may be living in lack right now, but I know abundance is mine because I have faith and confidence, hope in the word of God. So when you think about it that way then, hope, hope says, I know God's truth is true no matter what, no matter what I see, no matter what I feel. Faith believes and declares because of what it knows and what it sees. So faith and hope. Now faith is, say faith is. I love that little word before it, the sentence there as it begins, now. Right now, right here in this moment. Look at your neighbor and say, I got now faith. Come on, say, I got now faith. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith says that when nothing is working, it's still going to work because I have hope as a foundation. Hope is that steadfast confidence that no matter what I'm going through, God's going to take care of me. Listen to these scriptures here, Romans 5 and 5, one of my favorite verses, and it says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, if you remember this in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, now, now there ab abide faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Notice back in Romans 5 and 5. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in my life. So what I'm saying simply to you is this. There is faith, there is hope, and there is love, but the greatest of these is love. You see, love is what hope springs from. Our love is what faith comes from. But yet God said in order to have faith, it must be planted in something and that is hope. Hope must have a foundation and that is love. Yes. Amen. Yes. How do you know that God loves you today? Okay. Now most of you raised your hand. I'm a, I am one of those preachers that I believe in participatory preaching. I ask a question and you respond. How many of you know God loves you? God loves you. You need to hold on to that because life is challenging and things are crazy, but God says, I'm going to love you and I'm going to take care of you no matter what. Listen to this statement here. With so many of us struggling today to hold on to our faith, our confidence of what God's word says and promises, we must remind ourselves that God's word never lies and never fails. God's word does not lie. Let every man be a liar, but God be truth. If God says it, you can count on it. Now you've got to get off of your time clock and off of your timetable and get off of your calendar and you're going to have to realize that God sees what you don't see. He knows what you don't know. And while you may think this is the perfect time for God to, give, to literally give you a million dollars, God said, I can't give it to you right now because if I did, it'd screw you up. So I'm going to wait for another six months or a year, maybe two, till you get some things worked out so you can handle the blessing. It's a six-year-old who dead promises, I'm going to give you the Corvette, but you can't have it now. It's yours, but you can't drive it now. God knows the best time for everything in our life. He knows what we need, how we need it, when we need it. And he knows how to take care of us. Amen? So you see, faith is a powerful thing. Faith simply starts with, I believe. Say, I believe. Now, that's, that, now, based on that right there, I have a confidence because of hope. 
that I believe, that I know, that I know that no matter what's going on around me, no matter what I see or what I feel, I know that God's promises are real. But listen to me very careful. I know that I know that God's word is true, but I am also real, I've been living life long enough to know that I've got an enemy that hates me. He wants to thwart the plan of God in my life. He wants to make me doubt the word of God. He wants circumstances to be so challenging for me that I will back up in my faith and confidence in the Lord and doubt the word of God. In fact, Jude writes to us in that little one chapter book, and he says that we must fight the good fight of faith. We must contend earnestly for the faith, as he says it. This is the fight, folks. We're in a fight right now. Now, you can be indifferent. You can let life marginalize you, or you can stand up. You can be bold. Not arrogant, not cocky, not condescending, but confident. I stand on God's word. I see circumstances. I hear what others are saying, but I choose to believe the word of God. I want to be Joshua. Choose you this day. But as for me and my house, we're going to choose the Lord. We're going to stand on the word of God. We're going to believe what God says. That's what this really is all about. Hope is faith's foundation. If we're going to make it, we got to know that we know that we know. Listen to these scriptures. The prophet Balaam. How do you remember Balaam in the Old Testament? He was bought. He was literally, finally was bought by Balak, the king of Moab. But he, but Balaam resisted Balak for so many attempts to try to marginalize and minimize the truth of God's word. He said these words right here to that king because the king was trying to get Balaam to curse Israel. To speak a word against Israel. The enemy's trying to get you to speak a word against God. He's trying to get you to vocalize doubt and fear. Hey, I've done it. I've been guilty. I've allowed my emotions, I've allowed my, my feelings, I've allowed my circumstances to, at points and times in my life, to cause me to say things that I wish I hadn't said. To let go of confidence that I regretted that I let go for a moment. But how many of you are thankful God's a God of a second chance? How many of you needed a third chance? A fourth chance? How many of you are still thanking God anyway? How many of you picked your hiney up this morning to get to church when you would have quit, but you got up anyway? Excuse my French. I am. So Balaam said to Balak, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Numbers 23 and 19. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 18, For surely I say to you, to heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away from the law until it is fulfilled. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans 3 and 4, Indeed, let God be true with every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. Again, Paul writes to the believers at Thessalonica, and he says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because you have received the word of God you have heard from us. You welcomed it, not as a word of men, but as it is the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you, who believe. And Paul writes and encourages Timothy. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. He's simply saying this, you got to grab hold of the word of God and believe no matter what. Things will come and things will go. Presidents will be elected and new ones will come along. God raises them up and God brings them down. I don't know how the election's going to go, but I can promise you this. Some of you in the room are going to be happy and some of you in this room are going to cry. But we're going to come back to church And we're going to stand together as brothers and sisters in faith 
because we believe the gospel. Politics is politics, but faith is another thing. Hold fast to your confidence, your faith. Earnestly contend for it. Fight for it. Believe in it. Don't be ugly. Don't be mean. But stand strong. We have to believe. We have to believe. But we have to declare what we say we believe. You know, for a long time, I was a closet Christian when I was a kid coming up. I had a stuttering problem. So I wasn't real vocal with my faith. Because whenever I started to try to talk to anybody about my faith and I would come to a letter that had a T in it, I would that. Or M's. I was 16 years old and had a stuttering problem, had been had gone for help, uh, but the doctors said it's not anything organic. It's just something happening in him. I was a child of fear. I lived under immense amount of fear. I was tormented by fear. At 16 years old, I was down at the altar in our home church. We had just moved from California, found a home church there at Mableton, and it was a revival back when they did revivals. And I come forward and I stood in an altar, an altar call for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I remember coming forward and my dad was there with me. And I lifted my hands and my dad was worshiping, praying next to me as the altar was full of people. We were standing. And all of a sudden, this beautiful heavenly language began to flow out of me. Articulate, clear and concise, I began to speak in another language. My dad turned to me and said, Son, I, have, I, I, I want to pray for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as he turned to do that, he saw and he heard and he wept and he cried. But something happened in that moment. My confidence, my ability to believe finally found the foundation my stuttering stopped. From that moment forward as a 16-year-old boy, now I get excited like anybody else does, and sometimes your words can run together, but I don't stutter like I used to. I'm just telling you that simple story because God and his word is something that must be declared. Isn't it ironic that as a child, I was challenged with stuttering. And yet God knew his plan for me was to preach the gospel. So when I stand up behind this desk, I have all men, I'm thankful. Because I know that were it not for the touch of God, I wouldn't be here. I couldn't be here. Yeah, I failed. I've made mistakes along the way. But I kept getting back up. Kept getting back up. God is faithful. And his word must be declared. So when I declare and I preach now, it's because it comes from a heart deep inside that I know. See there, a lot of times, if we would just take a little bit of time to get to know the other person's story, we, we might understand sometimes why they're challenged with this or why they struggle with that or why they're so excited about this. That's why when I get up to preach, I believe what I'm preaching to you is the greatest message in the world. Amen. I believe you need to hear this and you need to hear what I'm saying because it's God-ordained. I have confidence in the Word, not in my ability, because I'm here speaking to you simply because of the touch of God. I have no business being here in the natural, but only because of him. Amen? Amen. Aren't you thankful he never gives up on you? Amen. But he doesn't want what he's done for you to remain silent in you. He wants you to share his goodness. Declare your faith and your confidence. There's power in your words. I've got I to move quickly. I'm going to cut through some things. In Genesis chapter, four, chapter 1, In the beginning, God created 
the heavens and the earth. Amen? I still believe he created them. I still believe God's in charge. I don't know how he did it. Don't have to know. All I know is he did. Amen? He created the heavens and the earth. And the, and the earth was without form, and it was void. It said that darkness was in the face of the deep, and darkness was in the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. But in verse number three, listen to what it says. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in you. You have power in your words. Quit speaking negatively. Yes, it's tough right now. I don't know about you, but I keep getting to the middle of the month or the third week of the month and my bank account is saying, uh-uh. I've got more month than I got money. But God keeps helping me, amen? And I know where you are. I understand that struggle. But listen to me. We've got to open our mouth in this time. We've got to quit being silent about our faith. We got to encourage people. We got to encourage one another. And we got to do even what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Because sometimes you can't find anybody to encourage you because they're all giving up. You got to talk to yourself. Like I did this morning in the mirror. Jim Bolin, you're anointed for this day. I started preaching to myself. I laid hands on myself, fell out, took up my own offering, and praise God. You just got to encourage yourself, amen? You have to encourage yourself. Declare, declare. Jesus said these words. I got to move quickly. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Say, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, say, say. Say, say. Say, 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 say to this mountain. Say to this mountain. What is your mountain? What is it? Fear, doubt, sickness, divorce, loss of a job. COVID, say to your mountain, open up your mouth and say to it, speak to it, address it. Mountain of sickness, mountain of debt, mountain of lack, mountain of greed, mountain of loss, I address you in the name of Jesus. Listen to what he goes on to say. And I say to you, ever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now I know some of you are sitting out there and saying, well, I just don't, I don't know about all that. That's that name it, claim it, frame it, you know. No, it's not. Long before confession of faith was made popular, there was confession of faith. Long before it became a doctrine of a movement, it was a truth, a principle in the Word of God. So get past this group, get past that group, listen to what the red says. The red says, that's Jesus, if you say to this mountain, mountain, be removed, and you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe, you'll have whatever you say. (laughs) Open your mouth. But you got to speak the Word of God, not your preference. I declare Biden's going to, no, didn't say that. I declare Trump, no, but that's not what that's about. I declare God will raise up and God will bring down. I declare that who God has ordered and set in this place will be in that place in the name of Jesus. And then love each other. Y'all better start loving each other. You better start loving the folk around you that don't agree with you politically. Because when this is all over, we're going to have to live with each other. We're going to have to come back to church. And your team's going to lose. Or your team's going to win. Don't you gloat if you're the winner. Are you okay? Are y'all all right? I'm preaching better than you're talking. 
Amen. 1 John 5.14 is my balance in all this. Let me share this with you. There was a time in my life when I got really called up in the confession movement. I believed it so much, and, and I remember it was in McDonough at the old Meadowbrook Church of God over on Flippin' Road. It's a little A-frame church that's there. I don't know who's in it now, but that's, that was my first church. I was about six or seven years from California, and I pastored here in McDonough for five years. My daughter was born here. Jason was with my son, was one year old when we came here. My daughter was born, actually born up in Clayton County there at the hospital. My first year, God was good to us, and um, our little church began to grow, and I was able to quit my job at, at Western Electric after almost a year. And... Um, there was a lady in our church that had cancer. But I just believe the word of God. I spoke to her in the name of Jesus. I declared that she would live and not die. I declared that she was healed. On August the 28th, 1978, that's my birthday, I was in her home that sent her home she was living in, she was staying in a hospital bed. She had already gone comatose. She was unconscious. She was dying. The family and friends had gathered. They were in the other part of the front part of the house. They had set up a bedroom there for her in the dining room. She was in a hospital bed. I was in there with her all by myself. She died on my birthday. She died on my birthday. I leaned over and with all the confidence in the world, I said to her, called her by name. Her name was Brenda. I command you in the name of Jesus. Get up! She laid there. I curse death. She died and we buried her. For the next year to almost two years, I took every book I had, every book I had except the Bible and the strongest concordance. I boxed everything up and I closed myself up day after day in our little my, in my little basement study I said God you got to teach me I can't handle this I've got to know I've got to know the truth and I've got to be able to understand this why did it work here but not work here why did this one get healed but this one didn't get healed And I, to this day, still don't have all the answers for that. But I have trust and confidence because I know God spoke this to me. I think I've shared this with you some point in time. If I haven't, then I want you to hear me very quickly. It is the will of God to heal. God's Word says it, and it's true. But the gift of healing is the only spiritual gift that's plural. Gifts of healings. Never saw that before. Checked it out in the Greek. It's a plural form. And the Lord said, I heal divinely. I give you a miracle. No explanation for it. It just happens, but I heal. I also heal through doctors and medicine. Through surgery, I heal. I also heal through diet. You know, if some of y'all quit eating hostess ding-dongs at midnight, you'd get better. (laughs) Change your diet, you start feeling better. A lot of your stuff you're battling right now, you could, you, could, you could bring it under control if you start eating better. Divine. Diet. Discipline. And the fifth one was death. It says, until you understand and see 
that death does not mean defeat. <coughs> death for the believer simply means welcome home. Brenda didn't die. She lived. She just took her last breath here, and her next breath was in the face of God. How can you lose when that's what happens? I had to change. But it doesn't change the fact that I still declare the Word of God. I declare healing. When I pray for you, I believe healing. I've just learned that, that it's not my responsibility to heal you. I trust the Lord with it. Whether he does it through doctor, diet, discipline, or death, he's going to do it. Amen? Say declare. And I'm going to close with this. These are the things I've got the notes, stuff, but I'm going to go for the sake of time. Yeah, just come help me here. He, that's the cue. To, if I'm going to stop, he has yeah, to start playing. There's no guarantee I'll stop, but he can play, though. You know, I'm just kidding. Say, faith believes. Say, say faith believes. Faith declares. But faith also sees. What is faith built on? Hope. A confident expectation in a desired future state. What is my hope? My hope is in the Word of God. What God's Word says is my hope. It's my salvation. It's my guarantee that when I breathe my last breath in this old world, if I die before he returns, the next thing I see will be him. I'll be in his presence. And no one can ever take that away from me. No war can stop it. No famine can starve it. No market crash can deplete it. It's already established. It's already purchased. It's mine. And it's yours. I'm going to encourage you today. Lift your vision from here and lift it back up. Quit looking down and start looking up. Look back to the Father of hope. Look back to the Savior of your soul. He's got you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And he'll never give up on you. Ever. I'm a living testimony of the faithfulness of God. He never gives up. Faith is hope's perspective. What do you see today? Paul said we're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. What is your perspective? What are you seeing today? What are you believing today? Are you seeing defeat and failure? Are you seeing what the prognosticators are saying? Are you seeing only what CNN or Fox tells you? Are you seeing past all the minutia of the day? and seeing him. Look at me. This whole world and all that's in it will come and go, but he will never stop loving you. His truth will be fulfilled. Every T will be crossed. Every I will be dotted. There is not one thing that God has said that will not come to pass. We just have to rest in him and trust that he's going to take care of us. But in the process of doing that, you need to believe. You need to declare, open up your mouth and speak what God says. And you need to get a fresh perspective. 
You need to change your perspective from the doubt, the fear, the unbelief, the loss, the divorce, the failure, the bankruptcy. Shift from that to this. God is my provider. God is my healer. God is my constant friend. Though this one leaves me, that one leaves me. He will never forsake me. You got to change your perspective. You got to get a faith perspective. And the only way that you can have a faith perspective, you see, because hope has vision and vision is called faith. Hope sees. How does it see? By faith. Hope believes, but how does it declare? By faith. Speak it. Speak what you see in this word. And this word will come to pass. So I don't know what you're struggling with today. I don't know what you're going through in your marriage, your family, your finances, your business, your body. What you're going through in your neighborhood. I don't know what you're going through in your community. I don't know what's, what you're going through politically in this area. I don't, I don't know. I don't have to know. But I do know this. God is a present help in the time of need. He is right here, right now, ready to help you. If you're struggling with your faith today, Fellow, let, let me tell you something. You want to know how you have faith? You can know you have faith if the devil is trying to get you to doubt. You know you've got faith if something inside of you is trying to disbelieve. So f- lack of confidence, lack of faith may be rising up inside you right now. Stand up on, not literally, but stand up on your feet and say, thank God I got faith. Or devil, you wouldn't be after it. So what I'm seeing right now, I renounce that in the name of Jesus and I declare what God's Word says. If God be for me, who in the world can be against me? I've looked around and there are more for us than there are against us. Folks, God's not going to lose in the numbers game. There is going to be a a move of God and a revival that's going to break loose and we may be on the prefaces of it right now. Because it's going to take a work and a a miracle of God to turn this world and this nation around. We are in a mess. It is time for the church to quit cowering in a corner, to stand back up on our faith and our confidence and declare what God's Word says, not our opinion, not our political persuasion, but this is what God says. Stand on it. Stand on it. Stand on it. God made both the donkey and the elephant. So get over it. He's the creator and the sustainer of life, not a political party. Amen. As you sit, we're going to close. If you've been watching online, God bless you. Please come back and hear a good message by the pastor. He just tolerated me, let me get in here and kind of bloviate, but thank you. I hope I've helped somebody in this room today to get back up and go straight ahead and not quit. Don't you dare quit. Don't you, don't make me come back there and kick you in the seat of your britches. Don't you dare quit. Get back up. Well, I blew it. Well, get up. Yeah, but I messed up this morning coming to church. Get over it. Ask God to forgive you. I did. They had I-75 closed down. I was messed up. I didn't know where I was at. In Atlanta, they detoured me. I got upset. But I said, you know what, God? I'm going to get there somehow, some way. I'm just getting to see a part of Atlanta I've never seen before. Amen. And I got here. Stand to your feet. Please. Don't mean to be bossy. Just bow your head, close your eyes just for a moment, and we'll be dismissed in just, just a couple of minutes. Pastor will come back and, 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 and tell you what you need to know to leave here today. But as your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, by the very simple act of lifting your hand, would you say with me, say, say, say Jim, I came in here discouraged today. But my hope is renewed 
My faith is encouraged. I believe God. Raise your hand real quick. Yeah, wow, they're going up all over this church. Let's pray this prayer out loud together. Say, Father, I thank you. Now come on, everybody, say, Father, I thank you that you are the Almighty. You are the creator and the sustainer of my life. You have numbered my days, and I am exactly where you knew I would be. Therefore, my trust is in you. My faith is in you. My hope is in your word, in your promises. And I stand today on the truth of God's word. I will get back up. I will go forward. I will live life. And I will glorify you. I will honor you. I will love my family. I will bless my church. And I will reach my community. I will be salt and light. Not only by what I say, but how I live. My attitude, my perspective will be positive, godly, and uplifting. And today, I encourage myself in the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. And God, because you are for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. In Jesus' name, I trust in you. I rest in you. Amen and amen. Give him a big praise. Amen. Pastor's coming. Amen. Let's one more time. Let's let Pastor Bowler know we appreciate him coming today and speaking to us. And glad you were here today. Glad you watched online. God bless you. Be praying for us this week as we go uh, to Gatlinburg. And I'll be thinking about you. Miss you. Pray. Tune in for Bible study. Eva, Eva's going to be leading the Bible study this Wednesday night. Tune in for that. And uh, I'll be back with you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. God bless you.